look, yet another power station that's closed. Not surprising when you look at the statistics. We're gonna have to start asking a lot of questions, especially since the Middle East is running out of fuel. We're gonna have to find different types of power sources, and one of them might just be wind power. But how do we make a more efficient and powerful wind turbine? Find out. A wind turbine is a structure that's used to extract rotary motion from the wind. Most commonly, this is through a bladed horizontal axis wind turbine. They often look like this, with one blade, two blades, or three blades. This here is a 2D representation of each of these blades, which is then taken and extruded and then twisted to form the blades. Here you can see the free stream approaching this section. It will follow the shape of the section, and in doing this, it will produce an area of high pressure below the section and an area of lower pressure above, therefore creating a lift force, which can then be made into rotary motion and then extracted as power. The maximum power that the wind turbine can extract can be calculated using the best formulation. Let's derive an equation assuming the flow was coming into the wind turbine and then leaving, and he calculated the velocity at the wind turbine should be about the average of the velocity upstream and downstream of the, of the wind turbine. If you maximize the power, it gives us a ratio of one third, which means the velocity downstream should be about a third of the velocity upstream. The power coefficient then comes out to be 16 over 27, which is approximately 0.59. However, in reality, you get a power coefficient that's much closer to this peak over here, which is about 0.35, because you account for things like profile, wake, and tip losses. The turbine must be produced out of one complete piece of ABS plastic and be printed in a box measuring 400 by 150 by 75 millimeters. The maximum angle of velocity must not exceed 3,000 revolutions per minute, and the TSR should be between 3 and 8. The wind turbine will be tested in a wind tunnel with air speeds between 6 and 12 meters per second. Finally, our goal with the wind turbine is to maximize the power coefficient. More information about what we just discussed is found here, and throughout the video we'll be adding links here. Now you're ready for step one of the six step process. Okay, so first for the basic design, we looked at the number of blades we we're gonna take. So firstly, you can't have negative numbers of blades, so that's pretty good. Then you can go for design without any blades. I know it sounds crazy, but a lot of designs have this, but they tend to be really complicated. We can consider one blade design, however one blade would be difficult to balance, so it doesn't fail. Two or three blades would work fine. Ultimately, we decided to go with a pretty privileged design as it's used a lot in real life. The main reason we use three blades in a real wind turbine is because of the constant moment of inertia about the yaw axis. Imagine the wind turbine is spinning around. It will be a lot harder to rotate it about this axis when the wind blades are like this as compared to when the blades are like this. A bit like that. Also, it's more efficient. Now uh, we want to maximize the wing size so that when 3D printing we can make the most of the area available to us. So we came up with this design. Uh, as you can see it's a folding design with two hinges around the nose cone which then allows us to fold it up into its final position. You want to make sure that the hinges can move but you also want to make sure that they don't bear any loads. So we do to make sure also that it's rigid. We glue the interior walls and we put some bolts to it. A lot of different types of airfoils with different thicknesses and different cambers. After looking up all the different properties on internet and in books, we decided to go for the SG6043. It was thin enough to have good aerodynamic properties, but thick enough to be able to withstand all the forces that were going to act on it during the test. The SG6043 section we chose is really good at lowering its number. However, you could choose to have different sections along the length of the blade. Designers suggest that for a larger wind turbine, you have a thicker airfoil for the first 30% of the blade, like the SG6040, and blend it into a thinner airfoil, like the SG6043, for the last 25% of the blade. This would create a, a greater structural integrity of the blade. However, at the small scale we are working at, it wouldn't make too much of a difference and it would really complicate the design on a GET package. What we realize is that the velocity of the airspeed is changing along the length of the blade. And the root is a very low speed and the tip is a very high speed because the velocity is equal to the angular velocity of the whole turbine multiplied by the radial length. Therefore, what you're trying to do is you calculate at each position what the local velocity is and the local angle. From there, you calculate what the twist should be such that you are very close to this local stall angle. That way, you get the twist distribution. 
Next, you want to figure out what the port is, and so you calculate what the power extracted is at each section, and then maximize over the port length to find what the port length should be for optimal power extraction. That gives us the classic Betts distribution. However, there's another guy, Smith, who came around and he corrected Betts initial distribution. By doing so, he was able to come up with a more accurate estimate for the maximum power coefficient that you're able to extract. However, Smith distribution does not account for the changing Reynolds number. As you're going along the plane, the velocity is changing and therefore the Reynolds number is also changing. So what we did in our MATLAB script was we implemented a small correction loop that calculated the local Reynolds number, recalculated what the sprawl angle is for that Reynolds number for this airfoil, and then it updated what the twist should be and what the cord length should be, such that you get maximum power out of In practice, if you make the two of them larger, you minimize the effect of central obstruction, and that is good. So now that we have the length of the blades, we have to figure out the tip speed ratio. Initially, we aimed for a 4, but then we figured out that a 4.5 actually gave us a higher power coefficient. So, we're used to 4.5. So now, once you've done all that, you have to make sure that your blades are not going to fail. Firstly, the, the, your blade will be obviously rotating. You have a centrifugal force going outwards that can break your propeller this way. Then because of the difference in pressure, the, there is another failure. And then the third type of failure is because of repetitive stresses. That would create fatigue and basically the blade would eventually fail. Right, now that you figured out what the stresses are going to be, you can write a cool MATLAB script like this to be able to figure out what the stresses are along the entire section of your blade. Once you figure out where the stresses are, you know where it's going to fail, and therefore you can make modifications to fix that. Firstly, you need to figure out a way to blend the blade into the nose. You need to make sure that it tapers inwards to reduce drag, however not too much that it fails. You can use a MATLAB script to calculate an appropriate circular area on the nose so the blade blends into. Now we wanted to inspire ourselves in what bears do. So we basically sit here and saw the wings of an eagle and of a vulture and both of them have a straight leading edge with the feathers going from 90 degrees of the leading edge to be parallel, sweeping from the trailing edge to that leading edge. So we decided to do that. But also wanted to make sure that would actually be a good idea. So we read some papers and we also looked at actual turbines and they do it like that. And now to finish off the design, you have to do the easiest part of all, design the nose cone. It's really easy because it's going to be a subsonic flow and therefore the best shape for you to do is a blunt conical nose, something like this. Now we've designed our turbine, I think it's time to manufacture it. So first step of that, we've got to make the 3D model in a piece of CAD software. 100%. <laughs> and then you 3D print your model. Now we need to manufacture the hook for the turbine using CNC machines. So now you can sand the turbine and then both people together. As you can see, our turbine surprisingly self-started at 0.5 meters per second. Around the wind speed of 4 meters per second, the turbine began to experience vibrations. These vibrations were very small and therefore didn't worry us. The maximum power coefficient was 0.31, which was reached at a wind speed of 10 meters per second. This was reached with a TSR of 3.4. So one of the things we could have changed to make our turbine more efficient is change the blend. As you can see here, the blend we have is more or less cylinder shaped and that doesn't create a lift. What we could have done is maintain that airfoil shape until the connection to the hub. In the test, our wind turbine self-started at a low wind speed of 0.5 meters per second. For this reason, we suggest increasing the angle of attack throughout the blade to increase performance at high wind speeds. Another way to make our turbine more efficient would have been to increase the cord of the blade. This would have made the area bigger, which would have increased blockage effect and therefore increasing the speed, making our results better. Thanks for watching, bye!